Right, so for the first problem, I'm, uh, I have a, a beam, AB, <coughs> under a distributed OW and a, a point node P at the center of it going down, uh, both of them. Um, I want to find the deflection at B using Castiglianos theorem and comparing it with any other method. So we can use uh, singularity functions, then integrate four times and use the boundary conditions at A and B, or in this case only A, the slope and the deflection at A, but we can also use um, the table that I gave you. So you can basically use superposition. And so that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna superpose these two given conditions. Uh, the only difference is that this P is located at the middle of the beam, at the center of the beam. So I'm still going to use this equation, maximum deflection, but replacing L by L over 2. Okay, And the other half of the beam, the other L over 2, is still going to go down because there's an angle. So I'm going to use this equation as well. So what I'm going to do is basically this. <coughs> this would be equal to a beam that is being bent because of the use of this distributed load W with a length of L plus the first half of the beam under a point load P going down I'm exaggerating the deformation and therefore there's going to be an angle, but there's no angle in this case. Plus the other half. So if this is my wall, I would be continuing this here. But that section of the beam would not be bent. Okay. So we're going to draw this here. So it would be completely straight going down after that P. Um, and so that's what I'm what I'm drawing here. I can find the angle at this point and my additional deflection delta in this case would be the angle theta or if I'm trying to be very precise it would be the this distance L over two from here to here times sine of theta. I want the adjacent, the the opposite side of this uh, uh, right triangle. But then because the angle is so small, because it's just a deflection of a beam, sine of theta is equal to theta. Basically, I'm just doing the limit when theta uh, goes to zero of sine of theta. It's just theta. Okay. Um, and so I have this equation for, for theta down here for slopes. Okay. Basically, this is my, my, my theta. And this is the, the equation that I'm going to use for the first term, and this is the equation I'm going to use for the second term, right? And basically that would be it. That would be one of the methods. So let's write down these equations. So this first one would be equal, my deflection, my total deflection would be equal to minus W L to the fourth ABI. That's the maximum deflection of this due to a uh, distributed load. Plus uh, minus P, instead of L, I'm gonna use L over two because this distance is L over two for a point load. So P L uh, cubed over 24, uh, over, sorry, over three EI. And plus the angle given by the equation again only only for L halves L over 2 instead of L so I would have which um, I would have that equation which is minus P L over 2 squared over 2 EI which is this angle times L over two. L over two. Okay, and that's gonna be my total deflection. I'm just gonna 
reorganize a, a couple of things here. So this would be equal. I cannot change anything from the first term. And from the second term, it, this is L cubed, so P L cubed over 2 in the denominator cubed 8 times 3, 24, plus minus P L squared plus uh, times L, L cubed 2 squared in the denominator times 2 times 2 is 16 in the denominator, right? So again, that first term, I'm not going to change anything. And this would be uh, common denominator 48. 24 times 2, 48. 16 times 3, 48. So this would be minus 5 PL cubed over 48 EI. Right? And I could factor out an L cubed and an EI or whatever. But this is going to be enough. Uh, We'll see if we if we need anything else, but oh yeah, I think. And now we're gonna use Castigliano. Um, so that is just saying that the deflection at B is gonna be the partial derivative of the energy with respect to the force at B, which are, which there isn't any, there isn't one. So I'm gonna create a force. Here, q equal to zero. Okay, so I'm not changing much. That's that's what we do. Um, and so this is going to be equal to the partial derivative with respect to q of the energy, the strain energy. And this is this deflection is going to be caused by the bending. So the energy that I'm interested in is the one from the bending, right? No, I'm not going to include, uh, from left to right, I'm not going to include tension or compression because there's no tension or compression, there's no torsion. And there is a transfer shear, but we saw in class several times that that is all manipulable. So in this case, and actually that isn't even included in, 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 in this comparison that I'm doing. I'm only looking at the deflection uh, due to the bending. So that's going to be m squared over 2ei dx. And I can put the derivative inside the integral. So it would be the integral of 2m, is the integral, the derivative of m squared times the partial of m with respect to q, so the chain rule, and then over 2ei. Which is just in the end, which is just m over ei partial of m dx, right? Now because I have, so actually I'm just going to erase here so that I have enough space for two and the two go away. That's all I did in this step, and because I have a kind of discontinuity here because of this p, I have to. Um, separate that integral from 0 to L over 2 and then from L over 2 to L. So I'm going to do that. First one is going to be from 0 to L over 2 of M1. M1. I'm going to split the moment from 0 to L over 2, which is different because there's no P there. And then dx. And then from L over 2 to L, there's going to be a different moment because M2 is going to uh, take into account the P. Okay, These are technically uh, 2 minus L and minus L to minus L. Minus L over 2 and minus L over 2. All of, my, all of them minus. But I'm just going to do positive so the integrals are easier to do. And then at the end, I'm just going to add a negative to everything I get from the deflection. Right? So what I'm saying that M1 and M2. If I grab, if I do a cut from B to the left where P is not, no, still not there, if P was, would be B to B here and the, and the wall here, uh, I can write my moment <coughs> X or moment in, in, uh, as a function of X. So that moment one 
which is the first part of the integral from 0 to minus L over 2 would be equal to the distributed load so this moment goes in the opposite direction at the moment caused by the distributed load so the moment is equal to oh and there's a a fake uh, point load Q or Q equal to 0 so it's going to be equal to um, W times X would give me the, the point force for the distributed load and that one it would be located right here in the center so that's X over 2 X over 2 okay. and then Q times X this distance would be X And then the same for anywhere between L over 2 and L. So if I do my cut, I have my distributed load, I have my fake force Q, and P would be somewhere over here. Okay. And again, my internal moment M2 would be equal to, same thing for W, Wx would give me the force, x over 2, the position, again being this x, um, plus qx plus p, this force, uh, located at x of the distance from here to here, minus l over 2. And for this, this, these integrals that I wrote before, I'm going to need the partial derivatives. So dm1 dq would just be drive and q, which is mul multiplied by x. So x, this is just a constant in terms of q. And dm2 dq is the same, because these, the, the first and the third term would be constants. With respect to q, I would only get it an x. So let's write the equations now. Um, on the left, <coughs> I know that my deflection is going to be from 0 to L over 2. Remember, this should be negative because I'm moving from the right to the left. So those values should be negative. But what I'm going to do is at the end, just add a negative to all, all my deflections, which is the same thing. So M1, I'm not going to write down the whole thing. Uh, M1 times this and then Q is equal to 0 and that is going to give me W X cubed so I'm multiplying it by X divided by 2 and then Q X squared but Q is 0 so I don't need anything else so that already took care of M1 DM1 DQ right over uh, uh, 1 over AI dx and then plus um, the second part so 1 over ei is going to come out of the integral l over 2 to l and m2 multiplied by x so m2 multiplied by this would give me the same term w x to a third over 2 plus q x squared but q is 0 so that's 0 q x squared but that's a 0 and then p x squared and then a minus and this minus p l over 2 x dx right and that is my total deflection. So I'm almost done. Uh, I'm just going to do the integrals. So this is going to be 1 over EI multiplying everything else. The integral of this is uh, Wx to the fourth over 4. And I find a 2 in the denominator. So this is going to be over 8. And I am going to evaluate that x to the fourth uh, on, at L. Uh, halves. So actually, I'm just going to write it down in terms of x for now. So x to the fourth 
evaluated at del over 2 and 0. Plus, same thing from this first term over 2, 0 over 4, 4 times 2, 8, evaluated from L, from L over 2 to L, plus Px over 3 uh, to a third over 3, um, evaluated from L uh, over 2 to L, and then the last one, PL over 2, x squared over 2, so 2 and 2, 4, again evaluated from L over 2 to L. So this is going to be first term, x to the 4th is just an L to the 4th, and a 2 in the denominator to the 4th is a, a 16 times 8. Uh, that's 128 and this is uh, positive so far but again this would be negative because I'm gonna add a negative to the whole thing um, then the second one for L I'm gonna get the same thing right um, well sorry for L I would just get uh, W L to the fourth over this 8 and then minus, just evaluating it at the lower uh, limit, I would get the same WL to the fourth over 128, because it's the same L over two here and here. Okay. So these two cancel each other out. Um, then PX, so plus P, L cubed over 3 minus P and add L over 2, L cubed over 2 cubed times 3, 24. And um, so I'm gonna, well, whatever. Uh, and um, P L over P L squared, X squared, which would be. L times L squared L uh, to the third over four minus P X squared so L squared times L L cubed but a two in the denominator uh, squared that's a four times the existing four sixteen okay and then now just gonna put these four last uh, fractions together so. I'm just gonna change them right there. This is gonna be a common denom denominator of 48. So this would be a 48 times three. 48, I can do that. Uh, 48 is a four, so 12. This is a 48, so multiply this by two. And this is a 48. So if I multiply this by 16, okay, so 16 minus 2, so this is actually minus from this minus, and then minus minus would be a plus. So 16 minus 2, 14 minus 12, 2, plus 3, 5. That's a 5 PL cubed over 48, positive. And then the other term right here, WL to the fourth over eight, positive, right? But what I said is I'm gonna be adding, and this is all multiplied by one over the i on this. Um, I'm gonna do negative, because my integrals technically should have been from zero to minus L over two and from minus L over two to minus L, because I'm moving from here to here, my x is negative. So it's basically just doing the integral and then adding in a negative there. So this is w l to the fourth eight e i negative minus five p l cubed over forty eight. And this is exactly what I got. Let's go to the This is exactly what I got from the superposition. So if I combine this with this, 
column statement says show your comparison as a percentage difference between DVs. There's no percentage difference. There's obviously going to be the same no matter what uh, method I use. So for this one specifically, this is um, slightly quicker for superposition because I'm using the tables. Like the tables are already doing all the all the work from the singularity function. But in general, Castiglianus, just like figuring this out as the two integrals and just basic math to do the integrals uh, is going to be much quicker than doing the singularity function. Um, you know, the distributed load and integrate to get the shear, then integrate to do a moment, then integrate to do the angle, and then integrate a fourth time to get the deflection, and then use boundary conditions in that in those last two equations to find the constants that come from the the, the integrals. That's going to be a lot more work. Um, so again, just this answer over this answer, that's going to be a 0% error. Okay. Alright, uh, next one. Um, several forces are applied to the pipe assembly as shown. Uh, knowing that the pipe has an inner and outer diameter is equal to the given values, respectively. Uh, determine the fatigue factor of safety of the pipe if the forces are synchronously reversed. Transfer shear is not negligible if, if there is, obviously. So that's just to, to point out that you should not assume that VQ over IT is zero, if there is a V, and neglect any stress concentrations. So for pipe AD, just do the pipe AD from this section to this section, the maximum moment, there, there, anywhere I stand from A to B is gonna have the same torsion, the same torque at the surface, and the same uh, tension due to this force, okay? But the moments caused by the other forces, and even this one, actually, no, not, not that one, but the, the other forces, the perpendicular forces to this, um, are going to be max at A. So basically, I'm just going to look at the top, the sides, and the bottom of A. And that's what I'm going to draw here. So at the plane where A looks like this, so if this is A, I can find four elements of interest. Because if I need the fatigue factor of safety, I'm going to be comparing the endurance limit to the maximum stress. Okay. Uh, then you're going to have some at the bottom and at the right. So the, a quick analysis of this. Um, let's do x, z, using the same uh, frame of reference that I was given. So I have this. Um, and the forces would just be, it's going to be the force in this direction of 150. And that I'm just going to call force. Okay, so F, 150 pounds because of the 200 pound force is going to be a moment that I'm just going to call torsion because it's on the same axis as the pipe AB so T equal to 200 times this distance of 10 so 2000 pounds inch uh, over Z I would have that force 150 at a distance of 10 so over Z, in that direction, I'm going to have M of Z equals to 100, 150 times 10, 1,500 pounds inch. Um, and because of the 50, the 150, and the 200, there's going to be a moment about Y. So it would be equal to 4 times 150, and then uh, 10 times 150, 200 going in this direction and 50 going in that direction. So I would actually have, is that 10 times 150 minus the four times 150, which is just the six times 150. Okay, so this, this moment is gonna be smaller than Z. And so the other thing that I'm going to do is analyze what kind of stresses I have in the different 
points of interest. So for this top one, it looks like this. There's going to be tension, okay, a sigma in the normal direction, and because of mz, tension from the bending, right? And if I look at what the torsion is doing, I'm going to see vectors, shearing vectors in this direction. Um, sorry, I'm going to see this direction and this direction, okay, because of this. So, and that top one I would see a, a force going in that direction. And there's no shearing at A, because my shearing forces cancel each other out. There's 200 going right and 200 going left. Okay, so there's no shearing. Now, if I look at the side, left side, I would still see the torsion going down. Um, I would see tension from the normal stress, the force of 150, and uh, because of M, Y, I would have also uh, uh, bending in, ten in, in tension. Okay, but I already know that this is lower than this because this value which would be 900 is lower than this okay so the bending from this is due to mz which is 1500 the bending from here is 900 and y which is the 900 right so this is definitely going to be smaller um, smaller than the other so that's not going to give me the maximum stress and then the last two are super easy because um, if this is under tension, if the top one is under tension, the bottom one is under compression due to the bending. And the same for this. If the left is under tension, this would be under compression. So just to give you an example, in this case where I still have uh, the torsion in that direction, I'm going to have tension from the 150 and then compression because the moment my with me causing this to be intent, this one on the left to be in tension and this one to be in under compression. So this is not gonna give me a maximum again, right? So basically I'm just working with this and that's all I need to do. I'm gonna have a total, hold on. I'm gonna have a total uh, si sigma of E over A in, in tension, so this is, I'm, I'm gonna hope I'm gonna expect that to be uh, positive, and uh, an M Y over I also expecting to be positive because it's under tension, right? Uh, this M, this M, so that tension here, like I said, is due to M Z, right? So this is gonna be mz times y over i. This would be 150. The area is pi. The d outer 1.9 squared minus 1.61 squared. Um, over four, so not four on the top, plus the moment. Uh, 1500 times y, which would be the radius, the outer radius, so 1.9 over i, which would be pi, uh, this to the fourth, over 64, right? And then for tau, I will have uh, tc over j. So I had already labeled this t, it's just Two thousand C is the radius, outer radius, so one point nine over J, the same thing as I, but over thirty two. Right, and I get my values here and here, whatever whatever those would be. Um, one second, which okay, and I'm gonna compare 
the total. So what, what do we do for the t factor of safety? I would calculate my SE. No values were given. So basically, this would be the Ka, Kb, Kc. All the marine factors, whatever, times my, my first um, um, approximation. But again, I didn't even give you the SUT. So I'm just going to keep it as SE for now. And my factor of safety is just going to be SE over that maximum Voronese stress. Okay, so I'm not giving you the equation here, but the next problem is asking you for that. So that's why I'm not giving you the equation, because you could figure it out. So I could come back. If I don't know it, I worked on the third problem and I came back. But I do know it. So it's going to be square root of sigma squared plus 3 tau squared. Okay. So I put this value here, this value here, and I come up with my sigma, which is going to be my max, my sigma prime, my von Mises, and then this would be the answer, SE over that number, or a fraction of SE or whatever. Okay, I'm done. Uh, 3A, a solid shaft is subjected to combined bending and torsion loads, giving rise to one normal stress and one shearing stress. So basically, same thing that we got here. When I combine these two, sure, it looks like this. But when I combine the two sigmas and I add them together, I basically just end with one sigma. It doesn't matter if it's x or y, and a uh, shearing stress. Okay, so that's what I have here. I saw it shaft, it's subject, and it's a shaft. Mm -hmm. Subjected to combined bending and torsion loads, giving rise to one normal stress and one shearing stress. So, one normal stress. And uh, I'm sorry, this would be equal to zero, just one, and one shearing stress. Tau. Develop an expression for the von Mises stress as a function of theta and tau. Use more circles to find the principal stresses sigma one, two, and three. So von Mises is given by the principal stresses. So basically, what I'm going to do is um, uh, more circle for tau and sigma, and uh, recognize which sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 are, and use that equation to, to develop the, the, the formula. <clears throat> so my more circle, I'm going to have a principal stress here, which is sigma 1, sigma 2 would be equal to 0, and sigma 3 equal to the other. And I expect that to be uh, like this, surrounding the 0, because I have only one sigma. So my average is going to be sigma over 2, right? And my radius is going to be the square root of that. So I gave you that in the previous problem, right? My center is sigma average, and the radius is going to be this equation right here. Again, sigma y or x, it doesn't matter which one would be 0. So this is just going to be sigma over 2, and the same for the sigma average, just sigma over 2, because one of them is 0. All right, so let's do that. The principal stress on the right would be my average plus the radius. And the one on the left would be my average minus the radius. And then this would be zero. Okay, so when I put these values in this equation, I'm going to get the following. Oh, shit. I'm going to get that sigma prime is equal to, I'm going to reorganize this, 1 over 2 parentheses, and then that big, um, this parenthesis is going to be, um, the exponent is going to be one, 1 over 2. So sigma 1 minus sigma 2. Minus sigma 2 is a 0, so it's basically just sigma 1 squared. So sigma 1 squared. And I'm just going to use the square root here. I know that this, the, whatever, whatever's inside the square root is going to be the same every time. Plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3. Sigma 2 is 0. <coughs> sigma 3 would be mi with a minus. Minus sigma 3. 2 plus square root plus minus. And minus is a plus <coughs> squared <clears throat> and then the last one is sigma 3 minus sigma 1 sigma 3 
minus sigma sigma 3 minus sigma 1 which is with the plus um, squared and to the 1 right so sigma prime is one half first term is going to be a plus b squared so a squared plus two a b plus b squared so basically the square root squared plus a minus a plus b squared so minus a squared uh, minus because there's the minus 2b minus 2ab plus b squared okay and then these last these last two would be equal to <clears throat> Sigma over two times sigma over two minus sigma squared over four. Then sigma over two times square root and positive. And then minus square root times minus sigma over two, which would be. Uh, with a plus, sorry, sigma over two square root, and then the last one would be square root and square root with a negative because it's ne negative minus or with a positive, sorry, and squared. Okay. And I did was uh, this. This was squared. Uh, so actually, no squared. I kind of messed it up. Um, now let me go back. That's squared. Let me rewrite this. Yeah, it was much, much, much easier. Because it's sigma over 2 minus sigma over 2. Let those go away. And then minus square root minus square root. So minus uh, 2 square root. squared times a squared okay much better now um, this term positive and this term negative go away and oh, I end up uh, I end up with um, sigma squared over 4 plus the square root squared, so the square root squared is just sigma over 2 squared plus tau squared. No, so it's basically what's inside this square root without the square root. Uh, plus sigma squared over 4, and then plus another one of those uh, square roots without the square root, minus. Four times this squared, and this positive was here, and the square affects the negative, so this is actually a four. Uh, square root, not of two, just square root. So the square root is sigma over two squared plus tau squared. Okay, divided by one half, and everything. To the one half. So one fourth, let's do the highlighter. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth of sigma squared, that's one sigma squared, and then one fourth of sigma squared times four 
that's a two sigma divided by one half or multiplied by one half that's just a sigma okay and then the other one uh, the other terms so one two plus four that's six now I'm divided by sorry mistake and divided by the multiplied by one one over two so that's a three and this is still one half okay, and that's the equation that I used before square root of sigma squared sorry these are all squared they're all squared here uh, three L squared right and that's what I want an expression for the von Mises stresses as a function of sigma and tau now 3b a solid shaft is subjected torsion uh, is subjected torsion loads only giving rise to one shearing stress so only torsion or only one shearing stress calculate the percentage average error between the fatigue factors of safety using a marine load factor kc with a torsional stress so basically using tau with this marine factor or loading factor of k1 with a Mises stress so what that means is in class I showed you that you could either have for KC you can have a 1 or a 0.85 for axial or a 0.59 so this would be torsion this is axial and this is bending or that if you have more than one you're combining you would use one so if you have for example torsion and bending you would you would use KC equal to one uh, but then you, you wouldn't be comparing it to either the torsion or the bending but together the von Mises stress okay so what I want to see is the percentage error and difference between the safeties of vector that you would get from either using 5.59 and a tau or a 1 and a sigma prime okay that's super easy this would be either an se a fully se uh, without the torsion so basically with the one over sigma prime or 0 0.59 of se compared to the torsion okay so this se would have ka kb kd e whatever but the kc would be one this se that you would be comparing to the torsion would not have a one for kc it would have a 0 0.59 and that's basically it because this is equal to square root from my when I what I just found here uh, my von Mises if there's an only torsion would just be 3 tau squared that would be 0 and in this situation it would be 0.59 is the over tau okay uh, this is just SC over tau square root of 3 and the denominator and this is just 0.59 se over tau and 1 over square root of 3 gives me 0 0.57 se okay over tau over tau so basically if i wanted to do an error i don't know which one is the correct one but just to calculate some error it would be 0 0.59 minus 0 0.577 over again i don't know which one's my reference one is using a marine, marine factor which is not, not precise and the other one is just assuming a von Mises stress so also not precise depending on, on what fatigue uh, failure criteria you're, criterion you're following so it's 0 0.59 okay so this would be 0 0.013 over 0.59 and just 13 over 590 and that's like 1.8% or something done so basically just to go over this again you can always if you only have torsion you can use the marine factor included in your se and compare it to tau or you can assume just one and use one mises but of course one mises would only have a tau here no no sigma because there was no sigma no bending or no axial okay and the results are pretty much the same okay